Okay, hi. So it's been a while, huh? <laughs> Obviously, um, lockdown and COVID and everything that's been going on. There's been a lot going on. And, you know, I, like everyone, have been feeling trash and hopeless and goddamn awful. So, you know, I haven't been keeping up with a lot of things. And I know a lot of people have stopped streaming, a lot of people have stopped doing a lot of anything. I stopped doing a lot of website stuff and vlogs and everything, and it's not been great. Anyway, so, there's a lot to catch up on. I'm not going to go into huge details about everything, because obviously, still being sleep deprived by the upstairs neighbours and not being allowed to sleep at night while they make anti noise. Council never, ever, ever going to do anything about that. Thought there might have been some progress with the house ombudsman. But, they could only investigate up to where the final response from the council was, and that was January 2020, which was, like, right at the start of the new neighbours moving in, and, you know, they're like, oh, but there's not enough time to investigate, even though they allowed an endlessly said, oh, you know, council needs to investigate, council needs to investigate, I thought they'd investigate the whole thing, no, I need a, another new goddamn final response. From now, and the council has been evasive and dragging it out and refusing to do anything. So, you know, even though it's proven with the community trigger and other things that there's wrong things, and like, literally people that work in environmental health have said that they're doing the wrong thing and should have done things, but goddamn bureaucratic, yes, it's a nightmare. <laughs> but yeah, that, that's one thing, and obviously. To deal with that, I've been um, eating a lot of sugary stuff to to feel happy and, you know, to have energy to even function. And obviously with lockdown and everything, I put on a lot of weight. <laughs> and it wasn't good. I wasn't looking like myself. I wasn't happy. But, you know, being on the bottom of the, the depression, like... When you literally lying on the seabed floor, you know the the waves don't hit you. It's like you can function, but it's not it's not nice. It's not happy. It's just functioning, and you know it's it's not good. But we're making some progress, you know. So obviously, Twitch thing was, was huge and did a lot for me. You know, made me feel a lot happier. Found a lot of nice people, and you know it was great. And. Obviously, there was one girl that I had a humongous crush on during things, and, you know, when we went into a things party together, I felt we had really good chemistry, and, you know, she knew Repo, she's got awesome taste, she's got a personality that I gel really well with, and, it's, like, is amazing and great, and, you know, perfect personality for me, and, you know, I... I been thinking about her a lot and obviously she was someone that I wanted to stay in touch with. I should have stayed in touch way better than I did and you know since things closed I've been missing her a lot and obviously there was a time where I posted on Twitter about the snow and you know post pictures of snowmen that I made and she was like oh well, I've never seen snow and I floated with her about coming over and seeing the snow sometime you know and yeah so and she's replied that she would love to come over and I've been thinking about that a lot since then and how she'd be able to come over because obviously she lives in Mexico it's <laughs> the entire other side of the world and you know I know she likes me but I don't know if she likes me like that you know it's it's one of those hard things and yeah so from then I was thinking about her a lot and how how that would work, how she'd be able to come over, because obviously I had a huge crush on her, want to be able to date her, and, <laughs> you know, before her, I would never have dreamed of having a long-distance relationship or anything, you know, like, I like being with people and, you know, all of the things that you can do together, and it's hard when <laughs> it's like, you can't do those things. And yeah, I was thinking about how she'd be able to come over here and I don't know, the way that I 
landed on because obviously laws and immigration and everything is ridiculous. The standard visa allows someone to come over for six months. Obviously, they can't work or study or do anything like that. So, you know, that's not the greatest for her. But, you know, that was like what I landed on is like, that's what we might have to do because I couldn't think of any other way that she'd be able to come over here. And then obviously, if she moves in with me, that's immediately a very serious relationship straight off the bat. So... You know, I, I've been thinking a lot <laughs> over the last several months, over the last, like, since February or whenever it was that I posted that about her and how that would work. And, yeah, I thought, well, you know, she's got an amazing personality. We get on great and, you know, she's beautiful and she's got a lovely accent and she's got great taste, you know, obviously from playing Switch things with her, she's got great taste in music, she plays some interesting games, she plays, you know, she's got good taste, obviously, as a streamer. You can know things that you, you maybe shouldn't know from, you know, without asking a person. And, yeah, I realised... I was like, yeah, we can, we get on great. I This would work great. And then I realised more and more that I'm in love with her. And, you know, I was feeling very, very depressed about not having stayed in touch and all of that. So that was also starting to get me really, really down. And then, out of nowhere, she suddenly messages. And then on Twitter, after replying to one of her tweets... Um, she posts a tweet, a very public tweet, that, you know, she follows few people and, like, the only people that she really cares about are me and someone else and love them. And, you know, I put love her back and she obviously liked that tweet and, you know, we've been chatting a lot since then. She took it in some DMs and, you know, we've been discussing her plans for how she would like to come over here and you know she was saying now she definitely would have been here if it wasn't for like you know how awkward it is to even be able to come over here but you know it's hard and again you know it's like do you mean platonic love because i love you entirely and you know and that's a lot for me like i i don't say that lightly. I've realised I really do love her and I want to try and find a way to make it work and you know, we keep trying to make plans and I know that she's going through a lot and you know, she's acting like me with trying to attack the issue of how to <laughs> be able to do the things she wants to do and just putting all her energy into that which is also getting her down. So you know, it's not I don't want to be causing more issues because you know if obviously you start a ball rolling on a relationship and then it's like it's even more stress for her to you know if she can't find a way to be able to come over here then that's even more stress for her and distress so i can see you know maybe why she might be holding back and like avoiding plans that we make but you know it's hard and, you know, there's nothing really for me here. Like, I live in a shitty situation and, yeah, you know, honestly, <laughs> like, I would even move over there. But again, you know, it's like laws and complications and everything. So it's, it's very difficult. But again, it's like, do I even know that he really loves me like that? Since we've been talking, you know, it's like, I haven't said it to her and she hasn't said it to me, you know, I, I'm really scared, but what can you do? I know that I've been missing her a lot and I'm trying to find excuses to do things and it's hard. And, you know, obviously with Brexit and everything and Covid, I too feel like I've... <laughs> You know, my life's all been wasted and, you know, a lot of my dreams and hopes and everything are just, like, completely impossible. Especially with Brexit, like, what I studied at university, a lot of the doors and everything are 
just irrelevant now. Everything that I studied is like kind of completely irrelevant and you know it's just like I've wasted my life in those aspects. The hospitality industry which I've worked in and studied in is the most affected by everything and like impossible right now. So you know it's all a challenge and I'm just left in this situation of perpetual hell where my upstairs neighbours stomp and slam into the ceiling all night until 4 or 5 a.m. literally every single night seven days a week they have people living with them maybe their culture <laughs> but you know it's like it's a one person flat and they're not allowed because literally the council law is that they're not allowed to have these extra people living there but they breach all that and then they just exist in antisocial hours whilst there's no noise isolation between the flats and they pour water into the ceiling which has left mould and stains in the ceiling it's like I'm living in hell <laughs> and you know it's not great I, I have no escape over here but you know obviously I've been feeling a lot more hopeful since she got back in touch with me and you know I don't want to drain I don't want to be a drain because you know it's fighting up through the depression from all of that is it's hard but you know it's I've been feeling happier and she's been making me happier but you know I don't know I want <laughs> I want the relationship but I don't know if she wants it but you know, I don't want to distress her and put all this stress on her because, you know, we've only really just started getting closer. But, you know, there's definitely a connection and I don't want to screw it up by being like, you know, <laughs> so full on. But I know that I feel all of this for her and I just hope that she could feel the same for me and it's harder because you know we are on the other side of the world and why would she want to be with some guy on the other side of the world she might never get to meet why would she want to get close and you know hurt herself potentially if we don't but there are ways you know even if what she's trying to do to come over doesn't work you know the the way that I thought it's a lot harder and less convenient and she can't work and she can't study and you know it takes her out of her life and everything but you know there are ways to make it work so she can come over here permanently there there certainly are if she wants me or if she wants that you know it's like there are ways and I started getting back in shape you know it's like after all of the depression and all of that I it motivated me I, I want to look like myself again I'm starting to a bit look a bit more like myself and feel a bit more like myself but you know I, I kind of hit a wall it's like <laughs> I'm still two stone above what I should be and just don't seem to be losing that weight no matter how much exercise I stopped eating a lot more and you know I've saved a lot of money not eating the food and my freeze is just not going down because I'm not eating a lot of the food and it's just I've hit a brick wall where I should be losing this weight and I you know it's, it's just not coming off and I don't understand it and you know it's still got still got the fat bits that shouldn't be there I don't know hopefully you know Hopefully my body will start kicking in and <laughs> getting rid of water, but it's annoying that I'm not quite getting to look how I want to look and you know, my face is looking a bit better, but I can still see like fatty bits that I don't like on it and you know that don't quite look like me and you know we'll get there, we'll get there and I just hope that she feels the same way because again you know we keep missing plans but I know again you know it's like she is going through a loss and she's having a lot of stress and life crises of her own the last thing she needs is me <laughs> adding to it with you know all hey you know by the way I love you and 
you know, even though we have literally said to each other in ways, and you know, I've asked her out in ways that I can, you know, it's <laughs> like on these pseudo dates, and she's like, that'd be lovely, that'd be amazing, you know, would love to, but then we just never get to it. But again, you know, it's like she might be holding back because of. You know, once we start a ball rolling on a relationship and, you know, if she's not able to get over here in the way that she wants, which she is putting all of her energy into and stressing herself out and obsessing herself over, you know, is that because of me? Is that because she wants to come here and be with me and, you know, am I adding to her distress by her wanting to try and be able to come over here and you know I hope not I hope I'm not adding to her distress because I don't want that but I do want to be with her so it's very hard and you know I hope that she feels the same I don't know I'm just having a very hard time with it and you know she's hope she's my hope she's my you know I feel like there's hope for the future and you know we can make a future together and get <laughs> what we want out of life but I don't know if she feels the same it's a challenge it's a huge challenge but I'm trying and you know I'm distracting myself the best that I can I'm trying to do things and get back into things and I'll try and vlog more and do more things and you know get back into shape because I want to look like myself and be happy and be myself you know for if she does manage to come over you know I want to find me attractive and <laughs> be able to you know be nice but I'm you know I'm having hard times too and I feel like sometimes I can't say because I don't want to you know stress anyone out but I'm trying I'm trying and you know I miss Twitch things a lot it was huge huge carrier through all of the hard stuff of Covid and everything and you know she's the one that I miss the most and I'm glad that she got back in touch with me because I'd been wishing and hoping and wanting and feeling horrible for not having stayed in touch after flirting with her about coming over and you know stayed in touch better so I'm glad that we've been chatting a lot and you know it's just hard when plans don't come and then when there are like days when we don't get in touch afterwards where we should have made plans but again you know it's like she's probably holding back to stop herself feeling horrible or you know maybe I don't know you know am I <laughs> too strong on the copium but I hope and I know she cares about me in ways especially as after all the time that we hadn't stayed in touch that she wanted to get back in touch like that and like you know we were definitely still close so you know I can only hope that she does love me because I love her and I want to find a way to make this work <laughs> You know, if she had been in this country or I'd been over there, I would have asked her out a long, long, long time ago. And, you know, it's, it's hard. But I hope you're all taking care of yourselves and having an awesome time. And Christmas is coming up soon, so I hope you have an awesome Christmas. But I'll try and do more things. I'm going to get back in shape properly. I know I've still got two stone left to lose. And I should never let myself go like that much. But again, you know, I stopped caring about everything. I felt completely hopeless. I thought I'd lost any hope for anything that I might want in the world. Especially being stuck in this nightmare situation. But, you know, hopefully I can get love. The most the thing that means the most in the world <laughs> and I do I do love her and I just hope she loves me too but take care see you around bye 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 bye, -bye.